problems. A Good Man in Africa by William Boyd Adapted for radio by Stephen Davis With Alan Rickman as Morgan Leafy Alison Stedman as Priscilla David Garth as Arthur Fanshawe Elizabeth Ryder as Celia Bill Patterson as Dr Murray and John Machikiza as Adekunle Morgan, darling, of all the people I've met since I came to Kinjanja with Daddy, you are the sexiest, the most capable, the most commanding, thoroughly in charge. I like a man to be in charge. I like to be, well, dominated, Morgie. It's something in my nature. Look, just slip it off. And let me run my fingers through those darling little curly hairs. Oh, Morgie, you're so muscular, hard and firm and strong. Oh, Mo, yes, that's right. Yes, do. Please do. Chris, I think I'm in love with you. Looks like we're in for a spot of wet weather. Morgan? What? Oh. Uh, sorry, I... Miles away. Funny thing, I always imagined Africa was, well, hot, you know, and dry. I suppose when I was posted, I sort of shut my eyes and imagined, well, the jungle. I had no idea it would look like this, like, well, Runcorn or somewhere. Mrs. Talifi, sir. Oh, no, Kojo, what's that stuff? This stuff... In pepper chain for your officer. No, Kojo, never this stuff for here, Sabi. Uh, uh, right, sir. Good man. Kojo? Hmm. Yes, actually. Bloody efficient, you know. Listen, did you want a drink? Visas to Zambia. Sorry? Drink. I didn't know we issued visas to Zambia. V to Z bottom drawer of the filing cabinet. Huh? Oh, good man, Morgan. Uh, I've actually dropped him with a bit of news. Sorry, Dickie. Uh, I'll tell you my news later, Morgan. <clears throat> Sorry, yes. Oh, hello, Arthur. Innocence has been there about half an hour, according to Isaac. From the purple wheel on her shoulder, I'd say she'd been struck by lightning. I imagine she put that laundry bucket on her head full of wet clothes and made a dash for it across the lawn. Tragic. Yes. The undertaker refuses to come. Why? One of our servants stoned dead on the lawn and they won't touch the body. Chloe's very upset. I said you'd sort it out. Oh, by the way, have you done anything about your Santa Claus outfit yet? Mm. Chloe wants to know. One thing at a time, Arthur. Where do I fit in here? Why won't the undertakers come? This he be shango kilisa. It's very bad. You never must touch her, sir. Shango, him be very angry you touch her. That's why no one will move the body. Who the hell is Shango? Oh, I thought you were an old Kinchandra hand, Leafy. Shango, him be lightning god. Him, god for lightning. Him very bad one, sir. Oh, sort it out with you, Leafy. I can't make sense of it. You need one juju priest, one gallon beer. And a goat, for you touch her. Oh, what rubbish, Isaac. Watch me. For God's sake, you people! I say, you must never touch her, Mr. Leafy. Superstitious claptrap, Isaac. Absolute nonsense. Now, let's get this sorted out. The life of a bloody diplomat. Cleaning up other people's messes. God, it's not glamorous, you know. I sometimes think that if the people at home knew what it was really like... Good man, Morgan. If I didn't have enough on my plate, I got this woman's body. Beer and sex, the two things that don't ever let you down. One of the outside servants at the residence, crossing the compound in a thunderstorm with a metal bucket on her head. She went out like a light bulb. Innocence. 
That's what we always say. I think some bloody dumb ignorance comes into it. No, in innocence. That's her name. Mrs F's maid. How's Chloe taking it? Minor inconvenience. I've been deputed to get rid of the cadaver before the Duchess of Bloody Runcorn arrives for Christmas dinner. Why don't they call an undertaker? Oh, for God's sake, Denzel. Oh. Hello, Geraldine. Morgan! Fancy bumping into you. <sighs> Excuse me. I got the distinct impression you were avoiding me. Well, I'm looking for eight quarts of beer and a goat. Congratulations, by the way, on your posting as Santa Claus. We were thinking of holding a sweepstake on your waist measurement. I'm supplying my own costume. Since your inside leg is already public knowledge... What a wit you are, Geraldine. Will you excuse me? I've just seen Dr Murray. Murray! What's the matter, Morgan? He, he just walked away. Of all the pious, unhelpful, stuck-up people in this godforsaken place. I think he's a good man. A good man? Him? He's the best doctor in Africa. Geraldine says so, too. If it weren't for Murray, I, I don't know how the twins would have got through. This is a difficult country for kids like ours. There's a chap by the door. See him? White dressing gown thing. Funny hat. Black man? Yeah, there. See him? He's been waving at you for the last quarter of an hour. Why is it so damn crowded in here? The place is usually deserted on a Thursday. I only dropped in for a quiet drink. I think it's Sam Adikunli. You know, the business professor from the university. The one you've been deputed to keep an eye on since the election started. Oh, sod it, Jones. A man can't do everything, be everywhere. Mr. Leafy, isn't it? Can we have a word? Why don't we step outside? Here come the Fanchures and Dalmaya. I won't keep Mr. Leafy from his party very long. It isn't a party. I was just in for a quiet drink. I can give you a couple of minutes, Mr. Adekunle. Yes, the terrace is this way. Isn't Morgan going outside? Arthur? Mm. Oh, it doesn't matter, Chloe. Everyone else is here. Oh, let's do get on with it. Dickie went round to see him anyway. Hello, someone mentioned my name. Stand still, <laughs> Dickie. What? Think about a few carefully chosen words. And that is the essence of my proposition to you, Mr. Leafy. You're joking. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, 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 ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you all for coming to the Ngong Samba Club tonight to hear our little announcement on behalf of these two young people. It is with enormous delight, on behalf of myself and Mrs. Fanshaw... Get on with it, Arthur. Uh, ...to announce the engagement of our daughter, Priscilla. Here, Mr. Leafy, have a glass of whiskey. And resign yourself to the situation. You have no choice. To Mr. Richard Dalmire. <laughs> What's going on? Isn't that leafy? It's Morgan. I'm Shango. God for lightning. Who are you? Morgan Leafy from the British Commission. I know you don't exist. This is my sixth gin and tonic. I exist, all right. Welcome to Shit Creek. How did you get here? I've no sodding idea. Think back. It must have all started when they sent the Fanshaws to Ngong Samba. Cretins. Why couldn't they leave them in the Far East where they belonged? Why send them here? Why pick on me? Murphy's Law Leafy. A stronger God, even than me. Well, it was a diabolical thing to do. I was just trying to think when I first came across him. Across who? Arthur Fanshaw? Dr. Murray. It was that fat tick Lee Wan, you know, that Malay so-and-so. I know him. We were having a drink in the university club, appropriately enough. Listen, my boy. You want to get that popsy onto these contraceptive pills, PDQ. 
Forget your rubber, Johnnies. Unless you can get a pal to send you some out from the good old UK. Don't use the local rubbish. It's like poking through a glove. <laughs> it's all very well for you, Lee Wan, but I can hardly get the Foreign Office to send a gross of Durex Featherlight in the diplomatic bag. <laughs> anyway, where do you get these contraceptive pills from? <laughs> Mr. Leafy, there are one or two notions I have to disabuse you of. The first is that Mr. Lee Wan runs this clinic or knows anything of its facilities. The second is that we exist to supply the contraceptive needs of members of the Commission. For God's sake, not so loud. My advice to you, if you're having intercourse with a local girl, is to use a sheath. It would save a great deal of trouble and embarrassment for you later. Good day, Mr. Levy. For God's sake. Take Arthur, my vanity case. I'm oh, sorry oh, I'm oh. late. The local roads leave a lot to the imagination, if you see what I mean. Are you uh, leafy? No, I won't shake hands. Very oily. Spot a car trouble on the way over. We were waiting. Uh, Mrs. Fanshawe. Local roads seem to be believed. Still, you'll get used to it. <laughs> like you have, Mr. Leafy. Ah, so this is Ngong Samba. Heart of darkness, eh? Looks more like runcorn. Mr. Fanshaw and I have been largely in the Far East. Yes, I'm a Far East man. Spent all my career in the East. I'm considered an expert on the Far Eastern mines. So they send you to West Africa? Pardon? Hi. Aha, this is Priscilla. Mr. Leafy, my daughter Priscilla. Morgan. Second secretary, dear. First, call me Morgan. First call you Morgan? Ah, is that the car? Is there someone for these bags? Uh, oh, is that the driver? Between you and me, Leafy, I think we're in for a very interesting few months. There's a great interest in uh, London in the forthcoming elections. Really? Mm. Look, Mummy, none of the babies wear nappies or anything. It certainly wasn't the way we were brought up, dear. Why is London so interested in the elections? Well, the consensus is that the man who stands to really run things if the KNP win, which they almost certainly will, is right here on our doorstep in Nong Samba at the university. Oh, really? Who? Eric Kunli. You know him? Um... Uh, Yes, yes, very well. Ah, well, of course, I don't have to spell out the three-letter word that's behind all this interest in, um, London, do I? Mm, three-letter word? The, um, oil situation in Kinjandra is going to get very interesting in the coming few years. Uh, oh, dear heaven. Oh. This country is going to be hauled by the scruff of its neck into the 20th century. Britain may have washed its hands of the place quickly enough at independence, but now there's real money involved, everything's changed, as I'm sure you'll see. Well, absolutely. Hauled into the 20th century, and let's make sure there's a British hand on its scruffy little neck. Right. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh. Oh, I think I'm stuck to my seat. Come on, Priscilla. Oh, wait a minute, Mummy. I'm all stuck, too. Just a moment, Nephia. Word in your ear. Um, about um, Priscilla. Who? Oh, uh, yes, Priscilla. Mm. I don't think I'm giving away any family secrets when I tell you... Priscilla was engaged to a trap in Malaya, RAF trap, good sort, or so we thought. And then at the last minute, while we were home on leave, she gets a letter. He's resigned his commission, broken off the engagement, married a, a Chinese. Imagine that, going off with the local. Well, Chloe couldn't understand it, neither could I. Anyway, bad blow for Priz. A bit upset. I uh, thought I might show the sights and... Um, Know what I mean? Oh, right. Why not? We go round again, sir, or we stopping here for now? Marvellous evening, Morgan. I'm afraid the Ngong Samba version of haute cuisine leaves a lot to be desired, but I flatter myself I know who keeps the better plonk. Morgan, please. Sorry. Why didn't you say I was sitting on your hand? Perhaps we'd better get you home now. Oh, no, Morgan. Wait. What? 
the night air. Let's stay a while. I don't want to go home just yet. Oh. Okay. Yes, fine. I just want to say thank you. What for? Not minding that I'm not, you know, relaxed. <sighs> don't be silly. It's just that I'm not very sure of myself. I'm a bit uptight, as I believe the current expression goes. Which is why I've come out here with Mummy and Daddy. Oh. You see, I used to be almost engaged to this chap Charles, only we had a terrific bust-up. The whole thing was getting fairly serious. I'd practically moved into his flat when I suddenly realised he wasn't the right person anymore for me. Just one day, for no particular reason, I saw how wrong it was. Hopeless. Charles was a sweetie, but not for me. I had to stop it right there, of course. Of course. It was pretty gruesome. He was terribly upset. But I knew I had to do it. May I put my arm around you, Briss? Which is why I'm a bit, you know, stiff. Priscilla, it may surprise you, but I know the feeling you're describing better than you think. Emotionally bruised, Mummy calls it. Mm. Hurt mm. in a very private place. A case of once bitten. Exactly. Now I'll give you a proper kiss for being so nice. And you can drive me home. Mm. That place you were talking about over dinner, when I was looking out of the window... The Tanga Fall? Where the big fish are. Tanga Fall? I'd love to go. OK, Pris, your wish is my command. Oh, Morgy, you are sweet. Daddy thinks the world of you, you know. Does he? Daddy? Does he really? I heard him saying to Mummy, you and he have only just got started on your secret diplomatic stuff. But he's not worried about any apparent lack of progress, because Leafy is a good man. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, Priscilla. That's very nice. Ah, there you are. I waited up for you. Oh, Mummy, you are sweet. It's hardly necessary, Mrs. Fanshawe, at our age. Marvellous news. Came through this evening. Arthur's gone to bed. Priscilla, why don't you go on up? Night, night, Mummy. She's coming. Who is? The Duchess of Ripon. Making a stopover from the capital. Should be here on Christmas Day. I've worked very hard for this. Sorry, what? Well, I'm sure when I say Ripon, you'll know the significance. Ah, yes. No. Duke of Ripon. Permanent Undersecretary, F.O. Everybody knows he's in charge of gongs. KCBGs, MCVOs. I make no bones about this, Mr. Leafy. I want some consolation for Arthur for all of this. All of what? Life? The universe? Gong Samba. Kinjanja, West Africa. The whole miserable, ramshackle, down-at-heel, stuffy, humid lot. Now then, Leafy, let's discuss our plan of attack. First of all, are you 40 or 42? What? Rather waste, ma'am. Now, come on, you can be direct with me. I was in the nursing volunteer force. What I can't understand is, is it a Whitehall snub of some sort? What? Is it a reflection on us who are out here already, in the field, so to speak? I mean, why do they think we need a new man? Double D and T, sir. Oh, thank you, Tojo. Oh, cheers, Morgan. I want you to tell me if you have ever heard of this person. I mean, why are they sending this dull Maya character to Nagorno Samba? What's Nagorn Samba got that the rest of the world hasn't? Uh, what person? I've written it down. Because it's secret. Because I can't pronounce it. Ade Kunle. Who is he? Maybe Geraldine knows. 
Oh, here she comes. No, she doesn't. She seems to take one look at me, and then she steers off in the direction of the television lounge. It's a terrible thing when that sort of thing happens to a man's marriage. Uh, Fanshawe seems to think this Adia Kunli beggar is some sort of big fish and I've got to land him. What for? Well, frankly, Denzel, my mouth gaped open at some of the stuff Fanshawe came out with. We've got a code name for the operation and a special box file that Fanshawe sent Kojo into town to get at the shop. And every time I see him about the place, he pulls me aside and mutters any progress on the kingpin project, Leafy. Oh, the man is barking clearly like his wife. The simple answer is to avoid him entirely. Not very easy under the circumstances. Well, him being Deputy High Commissioner has <laughs> never been difficult in the past. Uh, no, Denzel, I was thinking about other things. <clears throat> what were you saying about a new man, by the way? They're sending a new man from London, supposed to take over visas. But I'm in charge of visas. Well, there you are, then. Oh, oh Morgan. <laughs> Me, Jane. <laughs> Come on, then, let's go in for a swim. Morgan, <clears throat> are you? Well, nobody can see us. People swim nude here all the time. But you are not. No, of course. I've brought a cosy. Do you want to go behind a bush? <laughs> no. <laughs> right here, then. See? Oh. You came in your costume. <laughs> what foresight. Uh, back in a jiffy. It's heavenly, Morgie. You can do the fishing. I think I'll just lie back and soak up the sun. Get away! Get off! Shoo! Shoo! You've got to watch out. The whole place is alive with one thing or another. This is Africa, remember? See something? Scared, Morgie? Well, there are gorillas. Sometimes. You can't be too careful. <laughs> Maybe you'll catch one with that absurd-looking rod of yours, Morgie. Just make sure you keep those revolting maggots away from me. This is supposed to be a fishing trip, oh, Priscilla. I can't stand wriggly fish and crawly things on hooks. I just want to lap up the sunshine. You caught a fish on your line while you were asleep. I brought it in for you. Morgan, you bashed its head in. You put up a stiff struggle. I got the hook through my thumb. Have you spoiled it? No, I haven't spoiled it. Here, your fish. Show me your thumb. Oh, dear, Morgie. There, there. I'll suck it better. Oh, Pris. You are, you know... No. What? Bloody attractive. <laughs> I think I may be falling in love with you. <laughs> I know you are, Morgan. Why don't we... Just... Oh. What was that? Oh, look, there's your culprit. Ugly, big, black, biting ant. There. Now we've both killed. Oh, don't be silly, Morgan. Show me the bite. In here. Oh, let me see... <laughs> God, this is a funny thing. Did you wear this at school? Come on, uh, let Morgie see Morgie kiss it better. In there. <laughs> Any nearer. Morgie? What marvellous little breasts you have. <laughs> Morgie. Morgan, what do you think you're doing? Oh, no one can see us. Nudity is part of the course in a place like Pull this. Pull those trunks uh, up again, Morgan, or take me home. Well, I can't take you home since you brought your own car. Sorry, Morgie. You must think I'm very odd. But can't you tell, silly? Tell what? And why did you bring your own car? Well, Morgie, I brought Mummy's car because I knew I had to get back early and I didn't want to spoil your fishing. I'll miss you, Morg. 
Miss me? Why? I've got to go with Mummy and stay with the Wagners. Be back in a couple of days. Mustache now and get ready. Here. Don't forget your fish. You bring it, Morgie. Bye. Disturbing you, am I? Sorry. Uh, I didn't see us uh, on the other side. I know. I saw you. <sighs> My um, nakedness doesn't alarm you, does it? People bathe in the buff here all the time, de rigueur almost. Well, I uh, uh, normally am uh, myself. Well, feel mm -hmm. free. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm Morgan Leafy from the Commission. I'm Celia Adequinley. From the university. What's the matter? Won't they come off? Here. Let me try. I'm delighted to see such enthusiasm, Morgan. Well, you, you're a good man. So, you think we can bring it off? I'll say absolutely for sure. If we want to, we can. <laughs> you make it sound like the family motto. Uh, a Shropshire family, is Arthur, as you well know. Yes, I thought your parents lived in Uxbridge. Well, I was going back a bit. Ah. Yes, well, be that as it may. Now, the point is that you think we can get this um, Eddie Cunley character on our own terms. A lot of progress lately. Did you know he had a white wife, for example? Yes, I did. Ah. Now, the key to... Operation Kingpin, as I see it, is to find out how far the others have got to him before we come out with our offer. What others? The Germans, the French and the Americans. Oh, them. What is our offer? A oh, round-trip ticket to London, two nights at Claridge's, you know the form. Tickets to a couple of shows. Uh, no, Morgan. A low-level consultation at the airport, a junior official to meet him at Heathrow and see him off again. But if he's doing deals in Paris, Bonn and Washington at the same time, then we'd be playing into his hands, wouldn't we? I don't suppose for a minute he's been further than the ambassador bar in Ngong Samba. Really? That's your assessment? Absolutely. For sure, no way. Ah, you've spoken to him? People close to him? Well, but you must get close to him. Oh, I will. Oh, uh, did I tell you about the new man, Dalmeyer? He's coming out this week. I thought he could take over visas from you for the time being and leave your hands free for Kingpin. Oh, uh, right, fine, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Good man, Leafy, keep at it. For sure, Wilco. Sorry, Morgan. I'll just unwind the window. <coughs> That's better. <clears throat> the post-intercourse cigarette. It's the one one can never give up. To give up smoking completely, one would have to renounce copulation entirely. Listen, Celia. Oh, I like it out here. Last tango at Tanga Falls. Celia. You know Sam Adekunle? Of course, Morgan. I'm married to him. What's he like? Why do you ask? Just curious, darling. It's what do you expect? Ambitious, selfish, greedy, selfish. <laughs> Typical politician. Typical man, I was going to say. Does he like travelling? Why? Just, just wondering... What sort of man he is? What makes him tick? The curiosity of the lover for the husband. The primitive conquering urges. Yes. Yes, that sort of thing. Africa works strange ways on a man, brings out the animal instinct. 
The hunter. The killer. He likes travelling. What sort of place? I'd rather talk about you and me. Well, fine, yes, but... Um, You're I've... at the commission. Uh, three years now. Of course, I was hoping for something in due course, you know, in the way of promotion. It's terribly snobby, the British Diplomatic Service, unless you come from the right county. Oh, yes. That's England. That's how I remember it. Before I met Sam and left it behind. Mm. What sort of thing do you do, anyway? Oh, you know, a bit of diplomacy here, a bit of diplomacy there. I thought you were in charge of visas. Who told you that? <laughs> Club gossip. Expatriates who have nothing to talk about except each other. Well, yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> What's the matter? Need a pee. <clears throat> Hurry up, Morgan. We're like Adam and Eve out here. I'm God, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, yes, how? I've just drowned a few thousand red ants. <laughs> I must have wondered what on earth brought that down on their heads. You look out, they don't take their revenge. <laughs> Good God, Leafy, what brings you here? I didn't know you were a friend of Sam's. Oh, I don't know, Muller. Germany's friends are Britain's friends, eh, what? I suppose Celia invited you. How did you know? She mentioned you were coming while she was circulating with the drinks. It's quite a turnout, eh, for a birthday party? It's not just Sam's birthday party, it's a drum beating session. Oh. <laughs> Yes, Muller, very good. You're not taking a terribly close interest. He's a chief, isn't he? One of the biggest. Before the British took away virtually all his father's land. They did? Compulsory purchase before the war. My friend, I think they gave him about a hundred pounds for most of the Just gong one word tonight. No speeches. As the saying goes, make sure you fit talk for the drink of the beer. <laughs> I think he's going to win. He'll win in the Midwest, and I think the KNP will win overall. That is, if the army lets him. Of course. What's it got to do with the army? Ah, good evening, Francois. Why so glum, Morgan? It's meant to be a party. You didn't have to come. Is this his bedroom? Yes, I have another room over the passage. You don't. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to pry. Don't mind, Morgan. Things are, well, past their best between me and Sam. How did you meet? In Sheffield. I was a secretary at the university. Sam was doing his MA. Do you happen to know... Know what? Well, I spoke to Muller downstairs and I saw the French charge d'affaires. All business friends. And one or two Americans. Perhaps. What's on your mind? Oh, Nothing. What are those? Uh, Sam's tribal gear, his chieftain robes. He hardly gets a chance to wear them now. They remind him of what we British did to his father. Yes, quite. I always think the red one looks like a Santa Claus outfit. So it does. Celia. <laughs> yes, Morgan? Could I ask a little favour just between the two of us? Moses! Ah, Mr. Leafy. We no see you again two whole day. I am a busy diplomat with urgent business everywhere. I can't be expected to keep rolling up at home just to keep my houseboys from worrying about me. I meant, you know here, when the water, him go no good? What are you trying to tell me, Moses? No water day. Country, sanitation, sewage, living in the dark ages. Master wants dinner? Make me some fish cake. And boil some potatoes. And if there's any of that bread and butter pudding left. Very good. Him never on no diet. Him fat as mission house. And him blame the servant. Huh? Bloody cow. 
country. Bloody water supplies. Oh, sod it. Ugh. Master! He's off duty. Didn't you hear what I said? Mr. Leafy from the Commission. I know what is it? What's going on, Tina? Oh, thank God you've got here. This I've stupid I've been trying to explain to Mr. Leafy that the senior staff clinic isn't until six o'clock. Mr. Leafy, is it? From the Commission. We run a clinic here for students and staff of the university. As a courtesy, we will see Commission staff, but only at the times appointed. My colleague, Dr. Uka, will be on duty. I want to see you, for heaven's sake. Uh, it's all right, Tina. What is this, Leafy? Can't you see that there's a long queue there? It's bloody urgent to marry. I know it's bad form in front of an African, but I'm sure you can fit me in. Hell, I'm from the commission. Follow me. Now, listen here, Leafy. If that's your name, let me make one or two things clear. We do not run this clinic on the basis of private favours. Is that understood? This is extremely important. Embarrassing. I don't know how to begin. Is this a medical matter or commission business? Medical? You don't, you don't think I'd barge in here like a moron if I wasn't desperate to? Calm down, Mr Leafy, and tell me the problem. I was expecting a chap called Leafy, Morgan Leafy. Uh, Morgan's a bit tied up at the minute. Ah. He's engaged in some very special uh, undercover activities. Uh, that's why you've been sent out, I reckon, to cover for him. Uh, Richard, is it? Uh, Dickie, if you like. Dickie Dalmeyer. Ah. Ah, oh, good God. So this is it, is it? Kin Jabger. It's not a bit like I imagined. It looks more like Runcorn. Hmm. Well? You can pull your shorts up now. I just want to say, Doctor... This isn't the way I wanted us to meet. Sharp burning pain when you urinate? Oh, my servant, he, um... Yes, you said he noticed stains in your underwear. Any shankers? What? Sores? Crabs, lice? <laughs> rashes? Oh, for God's sake, Murray. I'm a doctor. I know. Which means you needn't call me by my surname. Sorry. What do you, uh, think it is, Dr. Murray? Hard to tell at this stage. VD? That depends. Of course. What are the uh, things it depends on? Who you've been sleeping with, of course. Come on, Leafy. I need a complete list. It's the law. Supposing it isn't gonorrhea. It'll take time to get the lab tests back, but then screening should have started and all your contacts as a preventative measure. You can't afford to hang about with a thing like this. I take it from your attitude that you've been sexually active. Well, I'm not a bloody monk. Sorry. Which loads the dice in favour of a gonna cockle rather than a non specific complaint. So, the names. The thing is, there are diplomatic implications. I see. Yeah, but well, this is a medical matter. I'm not a diplomat, or a vicar, or your headmaster. Frankly, Leafy, I don't care about your morals. My job is to prevent an outbreak of venereal disease, or herpes. Herpes? What's that? Of course, one sometimes forgets how long you people have been out of circulation. Herpes is a genital virus presently enjoying a vogue in certain Western capitals. Which capitals? London, Paris, New York. Washington? Bonn? Moscow? <laughs> I've no idea. I'm not a viral geographer. No. The list. Uh, unless you prefer to dictate it to my receptionist. Celia Atticonley. Hazel Mdongo, this a local girlfriend of mine, share a flat with, uh, she and I... Well, Any more? How far are we going back? Uh, six weeks just to be on the safe side. Geraldine Jones. Listen, Murray, uh, Dr Murray. Uh, these names will be passed on to the hospital in the Gong Samba. I suggest you take Miss Mdongo down there yourself. Mrs. Adekunle is entitled to treatment at the clinic here, as is Mrs. Jones. And while we wait for the results of your test, I suggest you stay off alcohol and sexual intercourse completely. 
We spend a lot of our time injecting penicillin into senior staff and the wives out here, if it's any consolation. Thank you. It's no consolation. None whatsoever. Hello? Miss me? Who's that? <laughs> me, silly. You're not asleep, are you? It's only half past six. Uh, Priscilla? Yeah, no, uh... I must have dozed off. It's been a hard day. Oh, did you miss me, Morgie? Uh, I missed you. Yes. What? Um, yeah, of course, yes, I missed you. Yes, Pris, I did miss you. Why don't you pick me up and take me out, then? Now I'm back. What about tonight? Morgan? What's the matter? Hmm? Sorry. Morgan, I was talking to you. Sorry, Pris, I was miles away. Where are we going? Perhaps I should drop you off. Morgan, that isn't funny. Let's go to your place. Um. Come on. Something I want to tell you. Oh, yes? About the time we went fishing. And why I wouldn't do... thingy. It. Oh, that. Don't worry about that, Priscilla. That's not important. Of course it's important. When two people feel about each other the way we feel about each other. We do feel about each other, don't we, Morgie? Of course we do, Pris. Oh, look, I'm not comfy. I'm going to take this off. No! Please, don't do that. Why not? Moses might come in. Oh, you sent him home hours ago. Well, he sometimes comes back. Very keen, you know, the sort. Oh, Morgan. You are funny sometimes. The reason I wouldn't do it that day... No, I quite understand. Young people today, they're painted a rotten colour. Anyone would think we had no moral standards left. Anyone would think the only thing we were interested in was quick sexual gratification. Morgan! Stop making jokes. It was my time of the month. But I'm fine now. We can do it now. Look, oh, for God's sake. Priscilla! Come on, Morgie. Uh, Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Oh, please, <laughs> Priscilla. Please, darling. My hand's cold. Come on now. Get those things off. <laughs> Take your hand out of there. Don't. Don't touch it. Oh, bugger. And you! Tell you the truth, Leafy, I'm not terribly certain. I'm sorry, but there it is. Not certain? You're a doctor. Try to control your feelings. I'm aware that a clear diagnosis is preferable in these cases. Well, what are the possibilities? It could be gonorrhea. It could be the incubation period of herpes. It could be... I don't want to speculate. Oh, for God's sake. I've sent off your specimens, but the laboratory is being rather slow due to an outbreak of Lassa fever in the north. In the meantime, I suggest you proceed under the assumption that it may be a gonococcal infection, in which case you must stay off alcohol while you're on the antibiotic treatment and, of course, refrain from intercourse completely. Uh, Dr Murray, if it's this herpes thing... Yes? I've been reading. Looking up the medical textbooks, have we been? It says I can never safely have sex for the rest of my life with anyone but the partner already carrying the virus. That may be true. It says there isn't a cure. I'm not familiar with the latest research developments in the West. But for crying out loud. There it is, Mr Leafy. 
take this prescription to the counter, see the nurse for your first jab. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other patients to see. When I get an answer from the labs, I'll let you know. This bloody country. If this was England, the labs wouldn't be too busy with... What was it? Lasso fever. In the north? Yes. It's like the entire health service being swamped with an outbreak of measles in Glasgow. Goodbye, Mr Leafy. So hot. Mm. I feel like a swim. Yes, I... What do you feel like? <laughs> Too hot for sex. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, Morgan. Oh, really, darling, I'm too hot. Sorry. Only kidding. You know, I really like being here with you. Mm, me too. I passed your message to Sam. Oh, yes. What did he say? He said he'd be delighted to accept your invitation to London. Oh, good. Only he wants two weeks at Claridge's and a car with a driver. He wants what? Yes, two weeks, car and driver. Oh, I'm not sure Arthur will wear that. Sam says the British will wear anything. He says he's prepared to forego his visits to Bonn and Paris and Washington for the time being. What's up? It just reminded me of something I've rather been trying to keep at the back of my mind. You mean how much you miss the real world? Why non uh, plume, uh, Morgan? Uh, I think I'll just go and have a pee. Oh. Go and take out my annoyance on those wretched red ants. He wants what? Two weeks at Claridge's and a car with the driver. They'll never wear that at the Foreign Office. In exchange for which, he's prepared to forego his visits to Paris, Bonn and Washington. But they won't wear it. Do you know what a single room at Claridge's costs? I think a double might be prudent. Oh. You think he has been to Paris? Bonn and Washington. I am prepared to stake a large part of my reputation as an intelligence gatherer on the fact that he has already been doing business in at least one of those places. How do you know? A feeling inside, a little twitch I get every now and then. Hmm. I sometimes think, Morgan, you take yourself a little too seriously in this undercover role. Are you two finished gossiping yet? Dickie Delmire's in the drawing room. We're having drinks. I don't think Morgan's met Dickie yet. The press, wait. I wanted to explain about the other night. I don't want to talk about it. Nothing ever happened. Dreadful mistake, the whole thing. Better left that way. All right? Dickie. Uh, hello, all. You ready, Pris? Pris is showing me the sights. Bye, Morgan. Bye, Morgan. Mr. Liffey, sir. I told you, Kojo, I don't want to be disturbed. Uh, visitor, sir. Or see anyone, Kojo. Now send them out. Ah, there you are, Morgan. They were most impressed. Who were? At the High Commission. You've spoken to Kinjanja? I've been there for the last two days. Didn't Chloe tell you? Oh, good God, Morgan, it's a good thing you've got your ear to the ground on Kingpin if you don't know who's coming and going in your own commission. Anyway... Turns out there's even more oil in the Delta than we first thought. British companies thick on the ground, high commission in there, batting for Britain all the way down the line. Key thing is that the KNP don't lose the election. Sorry, Arthur, what was that? Well, we want to find out a bit more about Eric Kunli's ambitions. The word in Kinjandra is that he might have got his sights set higher than foreign minister... What do you think? I'll see what I can dig up. Hmm. I hear you've got a source very close to our Mr Kingpin. Oh, I just keep my ear to the ground, you know. Yes, good man. Well, Dalmire seems to have got the knack of the visa section. No trouble. Oh, good. Oh. I say, you look uncomfortable, Morgan. Dying for a pee. Oh, well, far be it from me. Uh, stay in touch. Will do, Arthur. Excuse me. Mm. The best. 
Yes, I must say Peugeot slipped up badly with their back seat. <laughs> Are you sure? I that... told you. Sam's away and the kids won't be back for a week. I must just say, Celia, mm. it crosses my mind. I don't know where I'd be right now if it weren't for you. <laughs> You'd be on the back seat of the Peugeot. Ha <laughs> ha. No, seriously. Seriously, Morgan. I know you'd rather be with a young woman. No, really? I know. I've seen that bright young thing with the sharp breasts. What's her name? Priscilla Fanshawe. Just an immature girl. You really prefer being with me? I don't believe you. Listen, Celia, it may be hard for you to credit this. But men find older women more interesting? Hmm? Celia... <laughs> Listen, yeah. Celia. What? I, I just, I just wanted to know something about Sam's um, ambitions. Good morning, Gong Samba. On Tuesday, the twenty-eighth of June. And here is the 5 a.m. news bulletin. Good morning, Mr. Leafy. Oh, my Christ. You can say that again. <laughs> I take it you have spent a comfortable night in bed with my wife. Listen, I don't want you to think. Don't I tell have... me what to think, Mr. Leafy. Now, let's see. The cat is among the pigeons, I believe. That is the expression, is it not? <laughs> ah, you can't drive away till I finish with you. The gate is locked by remote control, and those are two of my um, executives that you see on the edge of the lawn. Now then, I was just wondering what the Deputy High Commissioner for Her Majesty's Government would have to say about the nocturnal activities of his senior staff. Eh, Mr. Leafy? Ouch! <laughs> you are well covered with flesh, I see. The sign of a greedy man. What with my wife and your black girl across town. How do you know all this? Never mind how I know. I make it my business to know things. Look. I don't know what you mean to do, but I'm not... Wait a minute. It is not a question of what I am going to do. It is a question of what you are going to do. Me? For you? A hole in one, as they say. You are going to preserve your integrity and my discretion in this embarrassing and disgraceful matter by doing a favour for me. What favour? I want you to get to know somebody, cultivate his acquaintance, win his confidence. In short, get to know him very well. What somebody? Uh, who? Alex Murray. He's a doctor. Perhaps you know him already. It's, it, it's, it's really terribly kind of you all. Uh, on behalf of Pris and me, my fiancé and myself, <laughs> I just want to say... Oh, what happened? You passed out. Muttering yeah. all kinds of rubbish about this cove shango. You've been drinking, I see. Oh, a couple of small gins. I'll say. I warned you, Leafy, about the drink. Oh, it's come to that, has it, Doctor? Oh. You seem to be OK now, so stay in the fresh air and off the booze. I've got to go in. It's meant to be an engagement party. I'll leave you here. Good night, Jones. Oh, good night. Engagement? Oh, Christ, yes, I remember. Yeah, Priscilla and Dalmaya. The jelly sod, I don't know how he does it. He's only been here, what, less than a month? OK, Denzel, please. Oh, sorry, uh, you're in no mood to chat. Uh, uh, listen... No, uh, you go on back. Don't lose your place at the bar. I can see you're feeling better. I'm fine, Denzel, really. Thanks, old chap. All right, then. I'll see you later. I'll come back. Feeling better. Oh. You still here? You made a bit of a spectacle of yourself. As a matter of fact, for what it may be worth, I had some attachment to that young lady. 
Oh, yet another of your conquests, Mr. Leafy. You must be the randiest diplomat in the whole of Africa. Oh, please, spare me. <laughs> Not fair, is it? That I'm always drawing attention to your misfortunes. Anyway, as I was saying before you so rudely ran off... I ran off to be sick. I wasn't feeling well. I'm supposed to be on the wagon. And I was plying you with alcohol. I beg your pardon. Anyway, we were discussing the progress of your assignation with Dr. Moray. You just tell me you expect me to bribe him. Just so. You're out of your mind. Setting aside why you want me to do such a bizarre thing, the man's a Calvinistic prig. What's more, he hates my guts. He and I are possibly the two least I am not interested in your opinions of the man, Leafy. I simply want you to bribe him. What for? Because he is chairman of the University Works Committee. And he is planning to veto the university's plan to build a new hall of residence on land presently belonging to me. Why? Because Moray has found out, being a thorough sort of chap, that it is adjacent to land under which is buried a municipal rubbish heap, which is on land I sold some years ago to the town council. I see. Oh, you say that as if you had some sort of moral half-Nelson on me, Mr. Leafy. But I really don't see that you have, considering your position. I make it clear, once again, what I will do if you refuse me in this matter. Yeah, I know what you'll do. And your career will be ruined. You'll be sent home in disgrace. But it won't work. How am I supposed to bribe him? You will play golf with him. And in some quiet corner of the course, you will put to him the proposition that in exchange for approval for the Hall of Residence, you will have £10,000 sterling deposited in a bank of his choice anywhere in the world. He may just decide that £10,000 may be well spent somewhere. School fees for his children in England, perhaps. Or some private research program to eradicate some indigenous disease from some corner of Africa. Everyone has a price. Oh, I suppose... Good. Then that's settled. I'll be in touch. Ah, Dr. Murray, still partying, I see. No, on my way to the library. I expect you want to know if I've heard anything yet. No, I thought you might fancy a game of golf. Golf? Yes, golf. You know, funny game with little ball, wooden clubs. I didn't know you played. Oh, all the time. Can't get enough. Real golf enthusiast. So she's still here. Looks like it. it is. And so are they. Damn it. I've just thought. It, 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 she can't be there when the Duchess arrives. The problem is... Nobody will remove her body until certain rites are performed. Lightning strikes come very dear, apparently, because of this cove Shango being a top god. And has no family got any money? Nope. Oh, this bloody country. I tried to get Murray to help, but he wouldn't lift a finger. You can't blame Murray. Why not? Because he's not allowed to practice outside the university gates. No end of trouble with non Samba health authorities if he seemed to be poaching on their territory. He never mentioned this. Oh, it's common knowledge. Is it? No, look, it, it, it's up to you, Morgan. See that this is sorted out and quickly. Uh, oh, by the way, what happened to that poet? What poet? The poet! Oh, for God's sake, Morgan, pull your finger out. There she is. Where? Over there, on the lawn. Oh, yeah. That him? Her? It? Are you sure you're not afraid of Shango? I come from Dahomey. Oh. Come on. Quietly. She not fit sight for human eyes. Steal yourself, Kojo. Kojo no steal nothing. No, Kojo. Oh, relax. Never mind. She all bloated like a rubber boot. 
And stinks. Uh, where are we taking her? The boot. She got no boot. I get hold of the leg here. The boot of the car. Uh, right, oh, sir. Uh, catch a hold. Oh. Oh. What's the problem with your friend? Who the hell are you? Shango! You don't come all! Greg Bilbo. I'm a poet. Looking for a chap called Leafy. Supposed to be putting me up in his house. Oh. Oh. Oh, Call for you on the blower, Leafy. Rima Fanshaw. Emergency at the commission. <laughs> What the hell's going on? <coughs> Let me through! My name is Robinson, Femi Robinson, People's Party of Kinjanja Marx is Leninist. We are protesting British interference in the internal politics of Kinjanja. I've no idea what you're talking about. This morning's paper. Notice the headline. Adi Kunli visits London. So what? KNP propaganda trivial. Now, let me through this gate. Trivial? Two weeks at Claridge's, and a car with driver you call that trivial? Let me through! Let me through! Hello, Arthur. What's up? She's gone. Who's gone? Chloe? Chris? Innocence. Innocence. But of course she's gone, Arthur. No, this is a disaster. I've caught the morgue. She's not there. Do you know where she is? Yes, Arthur. Well, where is she? She's in the boot of my car. Oh, well, that's a relief. From what point of view, exactly? Because you've got to put her back. It, did you hear me, Morgan? Put her back, Arthur. I nearly had a revolt on my hands this morning, a riot almost, when they saw she'd gone. They're all on strike, and the Duchess is arriving after lunch. She's got to be put back. How, Arthur, am I to put her back? I don't care how you sort this mess out, but I want it sorted out. There's a buffet lunch here for 200 people tomorrow. So you want me to put her back and then get rid of her again? Oh, I'm glad I'm getting through to you at last. Just look at the mess we're in. I'm disappointed in you, Morgan. I thought you were a man of flair. Now we're going to be made to look fifth-rate and totally non-British. Unless you start to pull your finger out, so get cracking. Actually, actually what? I'm a bit tied up with a golf game this morning. Leafy, this is no time for fun and games. Postpone your game and get on with your duty. And don't forget, Chloe's expecting you to be Santa Claus tomorrow. <laughs> and games. <laughs> So if we try to put her back just like that, we'll be spotted, so we have to be subtle. Uh, subtle? Uh, yes, sir. What are we going to do? We're going to pour this can of petrol onto the back seat of the first car we find parked around the front of the residence and set fire to it. Then, when everybody rushes out front to see what the hell's going on, we're already halfway around the back, and we'll have lots of time to get Innocence out of the boot and back where she bloody well seems to belong. What they gonna say about that guy, him on fire? What they gonna say? Bloody Femi Robinson and his people's flying pickets making an inept protest about British imperialism. The car's probably insured anyhow. So, come on. Yes. Oh, 
ready, sir. Well, I can't. I just want. Oh, bugger it. I'll have to get a bit nearer. <laughs> Oh, my Christ, thank God for that. Well done, sir. A very nice thing. As long as I live, I hope I never have to... What's up? You're here. It's all done, gone. My God. Gone. Oh, Jesus. Hello, Morgan. Long time no see. Nice hat. Morgan. You getting into your costume? Clary. Use the blue bathroom and don't be long. There's an awful business out on the drive. Those wretched Marxists have been up to their usual mischief. So we're delaying the start of the party for half an hour. Oh, Morgan. Those bloody communists. Look, have you fixed innocence? Yes. Uh, so I can tell the head boy they can all come back to work and just in time. The party's going to start any minute. We've been covering for the servants all afternoon. I'm... I'm bloody worn out. Well, they'll all come back now. Uh, well, Morgan, so far, so good. Count on me, Arthur. Aren't you being Father Christmas? Is that why you're wearing that ridiculous hat? You'd better go and get ready. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Thank you for what? For everything. Must dash. Devil makes work for idle hands. Excuse me. What are you staring at? The other bathroom, Morgan. Bloody hell. I would think. I've never seen a naked man with his hair and eyebrows and half a moustache singed off before. Hello, you. Morgan Leafy. And you? I'm the Duchess of Ripon. Oh, thank God for that. The rain might help to put it out. But, Daddy, it's completely ruining my car. And why are you standing stark naked in my bathroom? It's my bathroom in which you are standing stark naked, ma'am. Well, we won't fight. Uh, pass me my cigarette. It's in the ashtray on the sink. I dare say you are struck by my appearance. You might say so. There's an explanation. No, I can guess. Your hair was singed in that explosion I heard outside. But why is your penis painted purple? I was in the nursing corps during the war. That's not iodine. There uh, is uh, something my houseboy recommended for an... Irritation. Ah, walnut juice and pari pari. Why didn't you say so? He must come to the north. See? On the back of my thigh. I've used it for years whenever I've been in West Africa. You've been bitten by the Omdingo ant. The what? It's a poisonous red ant. I didn't think it came this near the coast. Anyway, Mr. Leafy, we can't stand here like this, gossiping all night. I have to go and be nice to some... Junior secretary who was playing Santa Claus. Me. You? Well, I should get well covered up or else you'll frighten the children. Will you excuse me? I need a pee. <laughs> what is it? What so funny? The royal we. Yes, Mr. Leafy. The oldest private joke in the British monarchy. I can rely on your discretion by this meeting, I assume. You may even get a DCVO if you keep completely, Mum. Ah, bye for now. Hello? It's Celia. Oh, C. 
Celia, I suppose you want to know how it went. Well, all I can say is you might have told me. Morgan, listen. I walked straight in in Sam's red tribal robe thing with the white cuffs looking like A1 bloody Santa Claus and all the African servants dropped their trays of drinks and twiglets and vamoose straight out of the room. It was a bloody disaster. Arthur was livid. Chloe was livid. You didn't tell me it was Sam's Shango robe. Turns out they only wear that bloody robe when they're trying to buy Shango off from totally destroying the tribe. It's the sartorial equivalent of a three-minute warning. No wonder Sam never wore it. Morgan, listen. So, I'm in the doghouse, plus which... Oh, oh, I can hardly bring myself to think about it. If I told you I was having to brace myself for a golf game, which... Morgan, um, listen to me. Celia, you've no idea what the last few days have been like. It's been hell. I'm near the end of my bloody tether. The only good news is I don't have herpes. I have red ants. Morgan, will you shut up and listen? I need a visa. A what? You're in charge of visas. I need one. I have to get out of here. I'm leaving Sam, Morgan. Oh, darling, I'm so pleased to hear that. But you've got to help me. This is, it's been a funny thing, but I've actually missed you, you know. You're the best thing that's happened in this bloody country, as far as I'm concerned. I'm only sorry I can't get you a visa. Can't? What do you mean, can't? What are you talking about? I told you I passed all that over to somebody else. Dal Meyer, when I took on this kingpin... Oh, never mind what it was. The thing is, I have no influence at all over visas. You must have. Now, this time tomorrow, I will almost certainly have left the diplomatic service for good. You bastard! Dad Morgan, after all, I... Dalmire, did you say? What's his first name? Dickie. Listen, Celia, will I see you... No, you shouldn't try to hit it so hard. It's rather different from the course at Feltham. Yeah, you may just clear that rough. Shall we go? Wait a minute. What is it? How would you like £10,000? Sorry? £10,000. How would you like to have it? I don't follow. 10000 It's available if you do something. I see. What something? Forget about your negative report on the Hall of Residence site. What the bloody hell have you got yourself into, Leafy? Who's behind this? Hey, no, 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 let me guess. Adi Kunli, you're working for Adi Kunli. No, I'm not at liberty to say. You bloody fool. I'm sorry, Leafy. I can't let this go. What do you mean? I'll have to report this. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Look, Murray. I think we'd better head back to the clubhouse. You're not going to do it, are you? No, I'm not. You see, you make this constant mistake. It's like your golf game, ready to give up at the slightest discouragement. You look at people, you make snap decisions about them. I didn't think you were likely to take a bribe, not really. You're not about to surprise me, are you? I forget you said that. And that's not what I meant. I meant something quite different. I assume Adi Coonley's behind this. I don't imagine you're in partnership with him for money. He's manoeuvred into a position, a difficult position, of a kind that I think I can guess at. Compromised you somehow, and you've taken his way out. I stand to lose my job, and I don't want that. I like my job. I may not be very good at it, but it's my life. So why don't you trust your employer with whatever it was? Well, he's not my biggest fan at present. I don't know. Your stock isn't all that low. I've heard decent things about you. When you're not running around puffing yourself into something bigger than you are. None of us is a big shot. And we all have to trust each other with knowledge of our own weaknesses. Something that I've noticed you find impossible to do. If you're talking about my complaint, I don't think that's fair. And speaking of complaints, do you have to report this? Couldn't you forget about it? I'll face Adi Kunli out, deal with Fanshawe somehow. Perhaps you're right after no, all. No, sorry. I couldn't live with myself if I allowed Sam Adi Kunli to make a fat killing at the expense of the university and the public good just so you could keep your job. Then I'm not such a poor judge of character. After all, beneath your exterior of justice-seeking fair-mindedness, you don't care a damn about me at all, and you're prepared to... I hadn't ditch finished. The... I'm prepared to delay my report until after the next meeting of my committee in three weeks. That leaves you plenty of time to face up to Arthur Fanshawe and get yourself out of a corner. If you've got the courage. It'll mean telling him that all through the most delicate diplomatic operation of his career, I've been in the pocket of our adversary. It'd kill me. I suppose you're referring to the catastrophic British attempt to influence election. 
If that was Fanshawe's project, he won't be feeling much like acknowledging it now. You may pull through, if you're honest. You don't know the diplomatic service, the things that have gone wrong already for me. It's my best offer, Leafy. You'll have to live with it. I think we'd better call the game a draw. Take my advice. Face up to it. You never can tell about people. You may surprise yourself. Moses! Where the hell have you been? That phone hasn't stopped ringing. Bilbo, I'd forgotten about you. So's everyone else, it seems. Turned up for me poetry reading. Someone had forgotten it was polling day. Not a bugger there. Who's been ringing? Bird called Celia, another called Hazel, a bloke called Fanshaw. Kept on saying, come off it, Leafy, I know that's you. Giza called uh, Adekunli. Adekunli? A man called Jones, a nice bloke. Uh, took to him. Who else? Mr Leafy, some Adekunli. I was going to ring you. Ah, uh, to congratulate me, I hope. Yes, we have a majority. Small, but adequate. Now, about Dr. Moray. Yeah, um, I was going to say to you... Did you or didn't you? I didn't. Well, circumstances were all wrong, and I, I just didn't... What? I've made other plans. I'll tell you about them tonight. Victory celebration at my house. Eight o'clock. See you there. Right then, what's the plan? I'm leaving here tomorrow. What about one last pub crawl, eh? I can't. Huh? I have to go to the residence, fix something up, and then I've got to go... Come on, all work and no play. No, I'm sorry. I'll be leaving here soon too, and I've things to straighten out. Everywhere. Everything all right, Isaac? Oh, yes, sir. She's still here. Somebody don't take her away, but she's back now. Well, go and get a goat and some beer and a fetish priest and tell Innocence's daughter that I'll pay for everything. You'll pay, sir? Yes, I want all this settled now. And the funeral? Everything. Let's get the whole thing sorted out, finished. Well done, Mr. Morgan. Good man, sir. Is it going to rain tonight, Isaac? We got small rain tonight, sir. You're not thinking you go and go samba tonight, sir? Why? Soldiers be there. What soldiers? You mean a coup d'etat? Yes, sir. Coup d'etat. Yes, sir. How do you know? Everybody is knowing, sir. Hello, Arthur. I didn't know you were coming tonight. Did Adi ask you? Where the hell have you been? And what happened to your face? You look ridiculous. Christmas pudding, too much brandy, whoosh. The Duchess has been asking for you. Most put out that you went around before she left. Make any sense? Not really. Women, you know. Ah, Chloe. What's happened to your face? Cigarette lighter, Christmas present, made in Japan, adjusted all wrong. Oh, would you mind if I had a private word with Arthur? Oh, hello, Pris. Morgan, I want to talk. It's Dicky. I just saw him in the car. Some white woman climbing all over him. Oh, Morgan, I'd no idea Dicky was like that. And it made me think the whole thing was just maybe on the rebound from you. No, Pris, you mustn't leap to conclusions. That woman is scheming for a British visa. There's nothing she won't stop at. You probably just saw the opening moments of her desperate plan. You mustn't make snap judgments about people. I'm sure that you and Dickie are really on the right track all along. When you think about it. Oh, Morgie, how noble you are. Maybe I've underestimated you. Morgan, 
Where's Denzel? Uh, he's not here. In fact, we're not together. I was going through the mail yesterday morning. There was a bill for treatment from the VD clinic for some local tart from the town. He'd clearly been keeping this little thing to himself all along, ever since you and no, me... No, Geraldine... You're rather leaping to conclusions, aren't you? Why take the dimmest possible view? Suppose somebody gave Denzel's name for a prank. So, I was going to tell you, Miss Delifi. I am pleased you didn't raise this matter with Dr. Morris, since I have discovered a cheaper way of dealing with it. I have a cousin working in the Ministry of Works who can be persuaded to lose their report of the university committee. <laughs> but this doesn't release you from your obligation to me, which I think I shall be able to call upon sometime in the future. No, you won't. No? You're foreign minister now. I'm not going to be your man in the British Commission. That's a different kettle of fish entirely. I'd rather have no job at all than betray my country for you or your friends. I'd think very carefully if I were you before leaping to it. What's that? What's going on? What's that? What's that? They're chanting. Oh, get down! Get those blades down! Shut the blades! So they're getting over the fence. What are they chanting? They're chanting your name, Arthur. My name? Of course, your name. It is anti-British feeling that has provoked this. Why don't you go out there before we all get killed? Oh, go out there, Muller. Are you mad? Go out there? We're British. British! Then you should go out there. I have a plan. Oh, this is a thing. Morgan says he has a plan. Oh, well, come on, then, Morgan. Let's hear it. Give me your clothes. What? Well, swap clothes. Chloe, have you got some mascara? Mascara? For a moustache. I'll put Arthur's DJ on and create a diversion. Once what? they think I've left, the heat will be on. I'll take Chloe with me. They won't see at that distance. And we'll drive straight through the gates before they know what's going on. Come on, Arthur. Quickly. We can't run away. We are British. Oh, for God's sake, Chloe, get your mascara out. <laughs> what is it? You should see yourself, Morgan. Your trousers right your shins. Looking ridiculous is getting to be a regular part of my job here. Now come on, hurry! All right now, Chloe. I, I think so. Too bad. I find most people melt away when you drive a car right at them. They still respect that British Leyland badge on the grill. All right, are you? Alex! Hello, who's that? <laughs> it's me, I'm Mrs Fanshawe. There was an angry demo at Ada Cunley's house. They were baying for British blood, so <laughs> I'm a sort of decoy. These are Arthur's clothes. I'm trying to get Mrs. Fanshawe back to the residence. The others left around the back before us. Very brave of you. I shouldn't go any further this way. There's a pitch battle going on at the university. The military are out in force and they're shooting at random. What are you doing out? Waiting for my ambulance. My clinic's full of students with gunshot wounds. Can I drive you? No, 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 no. You better get away. I'll be all right. Look, um, I wanted to tell you I've decided to resign my job tomorrow, so you needn't worry about me when you make out your report. You were right. Do the decent thing. This place and me, we never really got on. In a way, I'll be glad to get shot of it. So, fire away. I shall, don't worry. Oh, yes, and make a few copies of your report. Ada Cunley's found a way of seeing that the first one gets lost in the system. Has he? I will, then. Yeah, Morgan, right, thank you. And good luck. Thanks, Alex, and you. Better get off. Chloe's a bit shocked, I think. Bye. Thanks for telling me that. It was good of you. All right, Chloe. Yes, thank you, Morgan. I think you'd better stay the night. We've not much chance of getting any further. Moses will be back in the morning, so he'll bring us the news. I should have a hot shower, get those torn clothes off. 
Thank you, Morgan. I'll get us a drink. It looks very much like the KNP aren't going to be allowed to take power after all. Old Daddy Kunle is going to be thrown at the last ditch after he thought the race was already over. <laughs> this country, you never know what's going to happen next. Is this your bed, Morgan? Hmm? Yes. Morgan, I think we've been through too much tonight not to be together now, don't you? Oh. Uh, yes, Claire, uh, of course, yeah. I've been thinking about you ever since Christmas Day when you were getting ready to play Father Christmas. Uh, well, I can explain about that. No, not necessary, Morgan. I'll just get in and wait for you. Yes, Claire, you do that. Uh, I think I'd better shower. Yes? Dalifi? Speaking. Inspector Beho, Ngong Samba Police. I have been trying to reach Mr. Fancho without success. You are the next most senior British official. A British subject has died. I see. Who was it? Dr. Alexander More. What happened? He was transporting injured students in his ambulance. There was a thunderstorm, a flash flood and the vehicle went off the road. Dr. Murray was killed. The others escaped further injury. Thank you for calling, Inspector. I'll inform his family. Good night. Morgan? Who was it? Dr. Murray. He's dead. That man we saw on the road? That's the one. Some damn silly crash. Are you coming to bed? He's the best man I knew out here. He meant a lot to me, one way and another. Why does it have to be Murray? Morgan? Are you coming? No, Chloe. I don't think so. I don't think I am. If you don't mind. In A Good Man in Africa by William Boyd, adapted for radio by Stephen Davis, Morgan Leafy was played by Alan Rickman, Priscilla by Alison Stedman, Arthur Fanshaw by David Garth, Celia by Elizabeth Ryder, Dr. Murray by Bill Patterson, and Adi Kunle by John Machikisa. Chloe Fanshaw was played by Tessa Worsley, Dalmeyer by Colin Starkey, Isaac and Moses by Alex Tetilati, Jones by Brian Smith, Geraldine and Tina by Mia Soteriu, Kojo, Shango and Inspector Gbeho by Louis Mahoney, Muller and Bilbo by Bernard Brown, Robinson by John Machikiza, and The Duchess of Ripon by Mary Wimbush. Technical presentation was by David Greenwood, Paul Pearson, and Anna Nesbitt. The play was directed by Richard Wortley. Well, in next week's feature-length drama, Hercule Poirot is invited to a rather unusual dinner party, along with three other sleuths and four suspected murderers. After dinner and a game of bridge, their enigmatic host, Mr Shaitana, is found murdered. But who could possibly have done it with all the guests present in the same room?